If you don't know what shows to watch or how to watch these shows systematically and methodically so that you can better your spoken English, then buckle up. This video is for you. First off, I just want to say that most of you are watching TV shows in the wrong way, at least when it comes to learning English. If you're just watching it for the plot, for entertainment, then you do you. But if you're hoping to improve your English, then there is a scientific method. There is a highly efficient way versus not so efficient way. So first off, you want to limit the genre of these TV shows. Whatever you're watching, be it television or movies or even YouTube videos, you want to limit the vocab range down to the most common 3000 words. Where are these words? I've already spoken about it before. You can find the list, the PDF. If you just check out my information, check out my profile. That's beside the point. The point is you want to have a clear idea of what words to study first. Pay attention to abstract words, especially verbs, adjectives, one syllable words, because you have to think counterintuitively. Usually in English, the less syllables there is, the more definitions a word has. So words like go, get, take, hang have on average between 20 to 40 different definitions. And that's not including phrasal verbs like go off, take off, get on, get off, you name it. A lot of times when beginners watch television shows, they look out for jargon. They look out for complex words. They look out for words that kind of stand out, words that they can use to show off. But in your day-to-day -day application, in your day-to-day -day English communication, those words take up about 14%. In the meantime, when it comes to words that native speakers use on a daily basis, which are the most common 3000 words, which roughly take up about 86% of all your language needs. These words, either you don't know them fully or you've memorized them in Chinese. So you don't actually know how to put them into a sentence. You don't actually know how to put them into a phrase. The more TV you watch, the less it's going to make any difference in your spoken English and your overall English skills. With that in mind, let's look at some of my favorite comfort shows of all time. These are shows that I keep on watching over and over again, just because they show real people, real life scenarios. So it feels like you're living in that world. It feels like assimilation. My number one show lately is Gilmore Girls. This one I just recently discovered even though it's been around for a long time but it just uh, got popular again on TikTok. Basically it, the premise of the show is a mother-daughter duel. A single mother and daughter duel. They are working, they're living their life, they're going to school. It's very uneventful if you're going episode by episode but that's what real life is. And so that's what makes it a comfort show for me. And the words um, typically are within that 3000 range like I told you. So keep that in mind. And then show number two is Brooklyn Nine-Nine. In fact, let me go over all these shows. So number two is Brooklyn Nine-Nine, The Good Place, number three, and then The Office, and then finally Parks and Recreation. These shows are created by the same creators, the same producers, the same writers. So if you like one show, you'll like the rest. Kind of a bundle deal. And so I'm sure you can find these either on Netflix or on Hulu. It's really easy to find. However, the Chinese subtitles are a little, a little hard because these shows are not really all that popular, which is why I recommend for beginners, um, if you've never watched any American TV shows, just stick to either Modern Family or friends because not only are they great for beginners most of the time there's dual subtitles so you won't have any trouble translating you won't have any trouble understanding what the tv is saying unlike some of these shows that i'm recommending it's a bit more niche and then finally new girl New Girl, I believe, is also on Netflix. The premise kind of mimics Friends. One girl moving to an apartment of roommates, but it's not just focused on that one particular girl, even though the show is titled New Girl. It kind of follows around everybody. I love watching it because it makes me feel like I have roommates. In fact, when I did have roommates, we would watch New Girl every single night. It's just such a great comfort show. It's a great show on friendships. If you like friends, you will love New Girl for sure. And now that we've covered what shows to watch, I like to go over how to watch these shows systematically so that you can improve your overall English skills, but more specifically spoken English. So let's figure out what spoken English actually is to begin with. I like to define spoken English as instantaneous, improvised, and verbal writing. In a way, when you're speaking, you're just immediately writing on the spot. You're writing without a draft. You're writing without any hints or reminders. So when you don't have enough practice on slow output, namely output on a piece of paper, writing, you won't be able to speak naturally. Because when you're speaking, particularly when you're in a conversation, you're not just 
giving a monologue. It's not just you that's speaking. You're you're first having to understand what the other person is saying, right? So that's a skill on input. So that's why when a lot of people use TV shows to do shadowing or just practice your pronunciation or just mimic the lines, mimic the TV scripts, it's only practicing their pronunciation. They're just parroting a material. They're not processing the words. They're not processing the vocab. They're not processing what common phrases are used in this particular episode. And so when they don't have that systematic input when they don't break words down when they don't break the scripts down of course they won't have that output even though you're parroting um the entire episode like i i've heard some students say the way that they study their tv shows is either just by just by watching it like just by paying attention to the plot and not looking anything up or on the other hand another extreme is by parodying and practicing the pronunciation following every single sentence, of course, you're going to have a hard time speaking on the spot. You're going to have a hard time coming up with sentences and words because you actually haven't put in the time in studying these words. When you're speaking, you're not reciting what you read, what you parroted. Does that make sense? You want to make sure you know what you're studying these TV shows for. I would say before you even start watching TV shows, focus on your pronunciation, grammar, because these two elements kind of seep into every aspect. They seep into reading, writing, listening, speaking, what have you you can't escape pronunciation and grammar because let's take grammar for instance a lot of people assume that when they're listening to a tv show there's no grammar involved when you're listening to a conversation there's no grammar involved right they're just practicing their speaking they're just practicing their listening when no in reality grammar is an all-encompassing element it it seeps into every single sentence every time someone says a sentence there's grammar involved particularly in a pre-written show like a tv show or a broadcast show those materials were written and so in written materials the sentence structure is going to be more complex so if you don't have a systematic comprehensive understanding of the grammar rules your understanding of any given material written or audio or otherwise it's going to be slow it's going to be not 100 percent. the more you try to read and and watch these tv shows the slower you'll actually progress because you're you're cutting down a tree essentially with a really dull knife or a really dull saw. 就中文里面有一句话叫“磨刀不误砍柴工”。如果你先系统性的把口音的部分，尤其是连读的这一块先解决，如果你把这个语法系统结构都先解决完之后，你听一个美剧也好，你听一个听力材料也好，你就能听到更多的信息。然后之后你就是在提高你的阅读量，提高你阅读中看到这个单词怎么用，提高你的单词的量和单词的质量。然后你最后。才能在说的时候想起来 ，OK， 我这个表达可以这样子说，不然的话，你之前只是模仿这个剧的台词，你并没有、呃、就是有质量的输入。That being said, you gotta understand why you're watching each episode, why you're watching each show. Focus, preferably focus on your pronunciation and grammar first, so that you can focus solely on getting enough input, getting enough words, getting enough exposure to these common words, understanding how to use these words, looking them up in a dictionary, use a good dictionary, none of those. Yo Dao, Baidu Fine Crap. And then make it a habit to take notes on these vocab. Take notes either from the TV show, write down their lines, original lines, or preferably take notes from a good comprehensive dictionary. Either Long Man or Oxford Dictionary are great materials. They give you so many sentences, so many phrases that you can replicate in your daily life. That's essentially how the process goes from input to output. And then output, you have to get used to a singular output, be it in the form of writing, writing to yourself, writing diaries, writing, sometimes even just changing some elements, changing some words in the simple sentences given to you in a dictionary. Or you can practice speaking to yourself, you know, pull out a camera like I'm doing, record yourself speak, record into a voice memo app, and then listen to it. Listen to the words you use, listen to the sentence structure, and then see if you can adjust it, see if there's a better way to word a sentence, to reword what you want to say. Because a lot of times when people say they want to improve their spoken English or improve their writing even, the only time they get to put sentences together, come up with an original thought is when they actually need to be in a conversation, when they actually need to present something, right? When there's already a lot of stakes at hand. But I suggest that before you even put yourself in that high stakes situation, just sitting by yourself in the comfort of your own home, take out pieces of paper or have a notebook dedicated to your output. And so that way, gradually, before you even start speaking, you already have all these sentences. You have the so-called 
called 英语逻辑，英语思维。So 英语思维是怎么来的？就是靠平时多看句子，多看这些单词量范围合适，然后它的话题也很日常的这些句子，确保你是真正的理解这个句子，然后再开始逐渐变变为说 ，OK， 我现在是单向输出，然后再到 OK， 我跟老外对话的时候，他说的我能够很快的理解，然后我就不用那么紧张的去想我接下来要说什么。So it's a process. It's not just mimicking 美剧台词。It's not just parroting, ah,、uh, 美剧的发音 All right, so pick one show and let me know how you like it. No pressure if you don't. I actually recommend, like, for someone like me, reading or books are actually a better material because you can read way faster. You can read way more, ah,、uh, in a shorter period of time rather than. Watching shows kind of passively and listening to sentences. Yeah, if you don't like shows, if you don't like to be over stimulated and over entertained, I will make another video on some beginner friendly books that I recommend, all within the three thousand range as well. So stay tuned for that. All right, bye. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.